Hey everybody, it's Cam. Uh, so here's the update for this week. Um, this is pretty much everything I've been doing uh, in the past week. Well, what I've had time to do in the past week. Uh, so I started off, I wanted to get the MNIST uh, number recognition software actually working. Uh, so I tried getting that to, to work with Python, like just working with Python just in general. I was having problems with that. Uh, for the life of me, I, I just couldn't figure it out. So um, the first thing I tried doing was I tried to install OpenCV for Windows because uh, on my computer, I do have Windows. I don't have Linux. I, I tried it one time on Linux and I just got super confused and uh, I'd rather try it out with Windows first and try to see uh, what I can do on Windows versus Linux. Uh, it should be the same across both of them, but I know there's going to be a difference uh, for sure. So like I said, uh, I tried to install OpenCV uh, just like what you see on the web page right here. There's no Windows installer. Um, so what I ended up having to do is uh, I took the source code, I followed the directions in here where they wanted me to build uh, from source onto the, um, onto the Windows installation. And I spent about, I think it was about an hour, an hour and a half uh, going through the, the directions in here um, like every single one of these directions I've just followed to a T. Uh, at the end, I was no closer to OpenCV than I originally was. Uh, at least I don't think so. So, did it work? Um, 100%? I'm kind of not sure. Looking at, back at it right now, I would, before recording this video, I would have said no. Uh, it did not work but looking back at it now maybe I did get it working or not but it did take a long time and it kind of frustrated me uh, at this point and I was trying trying to finish off the directions just to say I finish off the directions just so I can move on uh, the next thing I started doing uh, I moved on to tensorflow because that was another thing um, a couple of the um, a couple of the instructions that I saw was to use image recognition software with TensorFlow. Uh, there was a big, huge consideration. There's a whole bunch of people that I saw initially from the search, the Google searches I did, that said, "Do it with TensorFlow. It's going to be a lot easier." So I installed TensorFlow or I think I did. Uh, so I followed the directions and then I said, wait a second, there's GPU support right here. So I started following directions for that, for my Windows installation, because I do have a video card that actually um, qualifies for the hardware requirements. Uh, I went through here, I made sure that the software requirements were all fulfilled. Uh, and then at the end, uh, it does say that uh, specifically for a Windows setup, you want to make sure that these right here are actually in your environmental variables for Windows. Um, just make sure that they're in there so that anytime there's a call that's actually made to to something that's that they want in there, um, it's there. It's definitely there um, to look at. So I got that installed and then uh, again I started getting frustrated a little bit so I was followed the directions I did everything I, I like I followed all the directions to a T got to the end and I just kind of like sat there and I was like mm, I think this is set up but I'm not sure um, because there's no real they don't have like a test to actually show that it's actually working for you. Uh, at least not that I saw. So 
the next thing I started doing, um, I jumped over to Jupyter Notebook because I have Jupyter Notebook installed on that computer. It's not this computer that I'm recording on. It's a, it's another computer. Uh, so I jumped over to Jupyter Notebook and I was like, okay, well, I'll get OpenCV and TensorFlow with GPU support installed over here. And then maybe I can just use Jupyter Notebook uh, to do everything I want to do over here and just until I can figure out how to get it working over on the other one, um, like on the, the regular Python installation. So I tried over here and I followed the directions. Um, so from the the conda or the com, conda command line, I tried doing uh, pip install uh, TensorFlow GPU hyphen GPU. Um, I think there was a, another Google search to actually be able to do that, and they were suggesting something on that. So I followed those directions. Um, I also did it. Tried to look at the OpenCV way to do it, and I honestly. This goes back to like last Thursday, and I, at this point, my head was mush. Honestly, my head was super mush. So, like, I thought I got it installed, and then I think there was, through the web page I was looking at, there was a way to test something out, like verify what was installed on the notebook. Like, you could see all the different libraries, and... It was either OpenCV or TensorFlow with GPU support was not showing up like it was supposed to. And I kept on pounding and pounding and pounding on that just to try to get to work. And eventually I was like, okay, well, it's it's not my time to get this to work right now. Uh, I'll just move on to something else. So then I started, I was going to get up and walk away from my computer. And, and I started thinking about it. I was like, wait a second, I have PyCharm actually installed on this computer too so that's that's my last resort at this point so i went through pycharm and uh, i made sure to go through and install all the different things uh, i wanted to get installed on here and i had to come over to this page right here and actually remember uh, through these directions on how to go through here and actually install the libraries that I needed to install, like PyTr or like TensorFlow uh, with GPU support. Uh, while I was here, I wanted to, uh, no, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, Cause there were some other libraries that I actually had to install, but uh, I, and I had to come back here, but I didn't know that at the time. So, um, so yeah, I, I kept on referring to this whenever I had to install another library um, to try to process everything. Um, at this point, I was like, you know what? This is it. Uh, let's let's move on completely from this. Uh, I think this was on Saturday, actually. Uh, I was like, let's do something else. So I started thinking about um, one thing I wanted to do was my lease is actually coming up uh, to expire uh, in a couple months. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to web scrape different websites for apartment buildings and see what's available. Uh, have that written down into like a CSV file or something uh, to reference later on um, just to see what apartments, how much they're going for, what days of the week, uh, like if an apartment is still up for, for rent throughout the week, does the price fluctuate? Does it change depending on the day of the week? Um, if it's up for like a month, like each day, does it have a different price? Um, the different months, is there a different price for that same apartment also, uh, if it's still available at that point? Um, so I wanted to try to get different data points. Um, so to graph everything, uh, I was pretty sure, and I'm not 100% because I'm still learning at this point, that matplotlib is gonna have to be installed so I can graph everything uh, up on the screen right there. Um, Cause I wanna, I wanna see the price on individual days, um, individual days of the week, 
uh, to see if there's a different price uh, depending on the day like at noon is it a different price like did they change the price at like 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that so by noon I should have an updated price then again at at seven o'clock does they have a different price like before they they closed up shop for the night um, so I want to get a whole bunch of that stuff um, definitely for for the days of, or different times of the day days of the week uh, different months uh, because I know during the summertime that's when all the snowbirds actually go back up north and then when it gets cold and and freezing all the snowbirds end up coming down here again um, so obviously there's going to be a bigger population they're going to uh, max out the rentals um, during the during that time of year if they have any available um, so I want to go through that uh, with beautiful soup but then I, I didn't get that to work either uh, I just I'm, that's something definitely that I'm going to work on um, so I was trying to work through like a tutorial that somebody had posted up on YouTube and I started going through it going through it uh, we get up to the point of um, having beautiful soup actually run through and scrape information off of a web page and actually return a status code whether it was able to to fetch information or not um, on the tutorial they got the right error code or it, it wasn't an error code that's the wrong way to put it uh, status code they got the right status code on my screen I got nothing but blank it was completely blank and I was running this inside PyCharm, which is different than what they were running. So I was like, well, maybe it's a limitation of, of PyCharm. Maybe it's not displaying it because of the way PyCharm runs. So since I get nothing back and it says that it ran the script fine, maybe it's fine at that point. And it doesn't return like a, a status code at that point. So I kept on going on and on and on with the, the tutorial and kept on following along. Um, and then nothing was working. But it kept on saying that it was running fine. So I I didn't know what to think at that point. Uh, I was definitely confused. So I kept on... I watched it, went through it again, went through it again, went through it again, went through it again. Still nothing changed. So I ended up watching the video on one computer I have and then on my laptop I also have PyCharm installed and then I started running through the the script from brand new like from scratch um, I started running through the script on my laptop and I was starting to get the the status code at that point so it was returning the right status code but it wasn't returning any other information that I was asking um, just in general just return and it was pretty basic information um, it just wasn't doing it so uh, I think it was pretty late at that point and that's where I ended it on I can't I think it was like Sunday so like all this stuff I'm looking at don't worry about it if I get flustered at some point come back to it another day I'll be able to figure this out it's no problem no problem at all so this morning uh, I was in line at, at a business uh, as, um, and I was looking through my phone and saw this one thing about uh, somebody was going through a tutorial about uh, on reddit about beautiful soup and they said, well, I'm going to make this dumbified um, to make it easier to explain how how this actually works and um, all the different things you need to get it working on your computer. Um, but they pre they made it as basic as possible. Like I was reading through the through their directions. It seemed fine. Uh, a couple of things, it didn't make sense to me, but I, I was away from my computer, so I couldn't 
actually test it out and try to go through those those um, directions at that point. Um, it's definitely something I want to do uh, sometime this week. Try to get that working. Uh, as soon as I get the basic outline of what I want to do to compare prices for, for the apartments, um, I'm probably going to make a GitHub account and actually post everything up there so that everybody can look and test it out. Like maybe, maybe it'll help somebody else out uh, when the time comes. So, but when I was looking at my phone, they're going through those directions and then in the comments below, below that, they were like, well, why don't you use Scrappy instead? And then people were going back and forth. Well, why would you use Beautiful Soup over Scrappy? And I think the simplest way that they explained it was Beautiful Soup just returns data from a single web page where Scrappy ends up doing a lot more. Um, so right here, um, it says that Scrappy is an open source and collaborative framework for extracting the data you need from websites in a fast, simple, yet extensible way. Uh, another thing that, that somebody was pointing out was it's more like a spider, so it'll actually traverse um, different different folders and different files within the, the folder structure at that point. Um, so this is actually something else I, I wanted to, to do too, because there's a show uh, that I, I watch from time to time, um, but it streams across like a web page. Uh, it would be really great if I could get the actual like mp4 or mov or whatever video file it is that's actually trying or streaming across through a web page onto my computer uh, it would be great if i could get that file itself and actually download that ahead of time so i don't have to wait for all the buffering i don't have to uh, see what different server i'm going to get connected to is a particular server uh, too too bogged down with with other stuff does it need to be looked at that nobody's really looking at um, is there a performance on the performance issue on a particular server server itself this way um, I can get the file ahead of time I don't have to wait for like buffering at any point in time uh, I can watch plus I can watch it when I want to watch it not um, whenever the buffer stream actually lets me watch it, which that kind of sucks too. Um, so yeah, that's that's another thing I want to do. So it's two separate things. Uh, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to have Beautiful Soup, Beautiful Soup actually run for a different apartment listings. Uh, I, there's to, with that, there's there's multiple parts. So there's different apartment listings. That's one part. And then mapping it would be something else, like mapping the days of the week, the month, uh, different times of the day. Um, and then I think I would you see Scrappy to try to get and pull the the video files. Um, so that I don't have to run into a buffering um, buffering um, thing. Don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, so I can have that script actually go out and search and get those files and actually dump it off to a NAS that I have. So that will actually be cool. So that's what I'm going to actually try to work on this week uh, along with I'm, I'm debating whether or not if if I have time to try to get a, a Wix site or some kind of free website uh, up and running to start documenting all the stuff that's that I'm actually going to start going through. Um, also, maybe maybe I need to start a Twitter page. Um, maybe, don't know, and Discord, but. 
I don't know what I would put on Discord yet. That's Yeah. I don't know what I put on it yet. So yeah, that's the update for this week. Um, if anybody has a comment, uh, please put that below um, and let me know. Uh, so this is Kim. See you later.